somebody coming! Kill him! It's a woman! Wound her! Greetings, Zero Fossil Fuel. Um, love your latest videos. I've only seen the three most recent. If you've uploaded, uh, uploaded more um, since my last look, I haven't seen those. I love your gasoline-powered glass shrapnel device that you've attached to your internal combustion engine. Uh, we out here would call that a, like a domestic terrorist device, and you would apparently call it a fuel tank. Uh, what I hope now to be able to do is to adjust the mixture for the presence of HHO while the engine is running on a load to optimize the fuel mixture with HHO and hopefully realize a net gain. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the goal. Yes, why would you want to do that? I can't imagine what you could possibly be thinking. You know, we already know that if you lean out the air to fuel mixture for a internal combustion engine, specifically gasoline, and, and most definitely with a carburetor, you will increase fuel economy. Of course, your engine's power will drop and your engine, if it's not designed to run lean, will be damaged, but we already know leaning out the air to fuel mixture will increase fuel economy. Can't imagine why you think that needs to be tested. You then want to use that leaned out engine, if I understand you correctly, to power a generator, which will in turn power a electrolysis system, which will generate oxygen hydrogen out of water, and then you want to feed those gases back into the air intake or the fuel intake of a internal combustion engine that is running that process. And you apparently hope to see a gain in fuel economy. Doesn't work that way. You know, if, if you wanted to lean out your engine, you just do that and don't attach your electrolysis system and you will see fuel economy increase. Of course, you're going to have to re replace your engine a little bit sooner, um, depending on the engine. You're going to have to live with a loss of power, but by golly, you can certainly do that. Um, I would suggest don't drive as fast, and you'll see a much greater improvement in fuel economy, or just if it's a vehicle that you're driving that you want to do this process on, just cut off some of the excess dead weight, throw out the back seats, um, don't drive around with a spare tire if you think that your tires are going to be good enough, um, don't fill your fuel tank as much so it's not as heavy, Will all these things will increase your fuel economy. What you plan on doing won't, it can't, it will never do it, it's, it's fundamentally contrary to the laws that govern the universe. You know, even if it was possible, if the laws were different somehow, the automotive industry would be doing this already. Um, people out there say, oh no they won't, and they invoke um, conspiracy theories among the automotive industries. The oil cartel won't let them, or they'll kill whoever gets this process to work properly. I don't find that explanation at all um, feasible or, or logical. What I'm suggesting, zero fossil fuel, if you want to be taken seriously by people who doubt that this, is, this process is possible, the first thing you want to do is you want to write out your protocols. You want to state exactly what it is you are testing. You want to state the hypothesis of what you're testing. Then you want to write down every single test you can think of to refute your hypothesis. Um, your hypothesis might say oxyhydrogen when injected into a internal combustion engine at a specific rate will increase fuel economy. Then you test to p disprove that hypothesis. That is if you want to be taken seriously by people who don't already believe it. Other problems that I 
spotted with your video and I, I mentioned that I was going to point some of these problems out to you. You want to measure fuel accurately and your device isn't going to do that. You need a graduated cylinder not attached to your internal combustion engine. You want a fuel line. You want your graduated cylinder up here above your internal combustion engine. You want a fuel line with a valve on it if you need to um, turn it off and on going into your engine. In your video, your glass gasoline fuel tank, your shrapnel device, your your horrible, horrible accident waiting to happen is vibrating violently. You can't get an ac accurate um, fuel assessment of that. You want a graduated cylinder. What you want to do is you want to fill that cylinder and you want to let the engine run until the fuel level in that graduated cylinder hits a mark. Then you start your stop, uh, stopwatch. You let your engine run until that fuel drops down to another mark and then you stop your stopwatch. You don't just fill, fill your fuel cylinder and let the fuel drain. You want the engine to come up to um, operating temperature before you even begin the test. And you want to do that many, many, many times. 20 times, perhaps. You also want to blind yourself so that you don't know if the oxygen, hydrogen, electrolysis device, the electrolysis device, is operating or not. If you do a test, you aren't supposed to know if oxygen, hydrogen is being um, trickled into the air intake of your internal combustion engine. You don't want to know if it is on or if it is off when you are doing your test. That is because, as I mentioned previously, when you're looking at your graduated cylinder for your fuel container, you want to remove your own bias or your observer's bias, if you have other observers, so that they don't uh, intentionally or unintentionally bias their judgment on when to start the stopwatch and when to stop it. You don't, you can't know if the oxygen hydrogen device is on or off if you want a valid test. And if you want to convince skeptics that this is a valid process, you have to do these things to convince them. So I, I, I mentioned again, you want to write down your protocols, you want to blind yourself, and you want to get a valid measurement for your fuel intake, starting and stopping the engine before each run of each test and call me back later when you do that and maybe I'll offer some more advice. And I sure hope you're not smoking cigarettes when you're testing your glass fuel tank.